All right, so problem 76, we have a particle that moves along the x-axis so that at any time t is more than or equal to zero, its velocity is given by this equation. And it's asking for what's the acceleration of the particle at time t equals six. Okay, so um, this one's actually not too much, um, not too much work as long as you get the general idea. And that's for you to know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So V prime of T is A of T. And then all you have to do is then evaluate A of six. Evaluate the acceleration function when T is six. And since this is a calculator sec allowed section of, your, of the exam, you can just use your calculator to do the work. So in here, I go to the you can go to um, the numerical derivative function at a point, make the variable whatever you want. I'm just going to put x value is 6, calculate the first derivative, enter my function. So x squared times natural log of x plus 2. And bang, there you go. That's my answer. It does all the work for you. The answer is C, 29.453. All right, 77. We're given that the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x is equal to 6, and that the integral from 3 to 5 of f of x is equal to 4. And we want to find the integral from 0 to 5 of 3 plus 2 times f of x. So the idea here is to um, recognize that you're basically just going to um, calculate two derivatives, or not two derivatives, two integrals, and then just add them together. But let me just break this down step by step so you see exactly what I mean. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 5 of 3 dx plus the integral from 0 to 5 of 2 f of x dx. This is the same thing as that. You can break it up into adding those two integrals. This, you just use your, um, you use like your, I call it the reverse power rule properties. This would just give you 3x if you're going to integrate from 0 to 5. And the derivative of 3 is 3x. Doing this part, you get you know, 3 times 15, or 3 times 5 is 15 minus 0, plus, plus this integral. And here, all you're doing is, you can factor out that 2. All you're doing is multiplying the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x by 2. Now, the integral from 0 to 3 is 6, and the integral from 3 to 5 is 4. So then the integral from 0 to 5, you can connect these two. From 0 to 5, it's just 6 plus 4. And again, we're just multiplying this quantity by 2. And then all you really have is 15 plus 2 times 10, or 15 plus 20, which is just 35. And your answer is D. All right, 78. We're told that for t greater than or equal to zero hours, large H is a differential function of t that gives the temperature in degrees Celsius at an Arctic weather station. Which of the following is the best interpretation of H prime 24? Okay, so it's really just a matter of understanding what the derivative is in in relation to the original function. So if H represents the temperature, then H prime, then H prime or the derivative of H represents the, the way the temperature is changing or the rate of change of temperature. And for this specific value, we're looking at T is 24. 
So we're basically looking at the rate of change of temperature like at the 24th hour. So let's just see what best um, would be the best. So like, so let's, let me actually go through a couple of these just so clear this, clear what they're trying to get you at. So it's definitely not the change in temperature during the first day, but that, you know, that's just going on. The change in temperature during the 24th hour, don't just, change is not necessarily rate of change. Change is a little different. It changes, you know, um, like uh, change, just, uh, I don't want to over confuse it, but change is not the same as rate of change. You know, um, you know, changing from, you know, from position zero to position five, is not the same as how fast you change from position zero to, to position five. So um, yeah, just don't over, just don't overthink that. Sometimes I'll make that mistake. Um, now for C, this is average rate. This is not average rate. This would probably be more if they were on. If you have a problem that deals like the, the average value function or formula, but I'll mention that when we get to a problem like that. It's not average. And again, it's not there in the first day. It's, it specifies at this hour. So then the answer would just be. All right, 79. A spherical tank contains 81.637 gallons of water at time t equals zero. For the next six minutes, water flows out of the tank at a rate of nine sine of the square root of t plus one gallons per minute. How many gallons of water are in a tank at the end of six minutes? Okay, so um, what you want to recognize is if you integrate the rate, you get that you get basically the original function. And if we're going to integrate, let's say rate of change, you know, you know, rate of change in this case of gallons of water from zero to six. When you integrate this, that basically tells you how much water accumulated between those hours. That tells you amount of water that accumulated. So, so um, we start with 81.637, we start with 81.637 gallons of water and it says it's flowing out. So you're losing this amount. So your amount would be 81.637 minus this. That would tell you what um, you have remaining um, at the six hour or at, no, at the six minute. So let's just use this um, and evaluate that in our calculator. So here you can go to your calculus function, numerical integral. Make sure I don't mess up when I enter. Nine sine of x squared, nine sine of square root of x plus one. So I've lost 45 gallons during those um, six minutes. So then I just do 81.637 minus this 45. And that's how much I'm left with. So it's going to be about 36.6. And so my answer would be A. All right, so there you go.